Krish, when, when I'm thinking about what I'm curious about out of this quarter, I'm thinking about discipline when it comes to what Apple's building and inventory levels combined, frankly, with China and, and some of the demand dynamics outside the U.S. What do you think is going to be most important? Sure, John, thanks for having me. Um, you know, to be honest, I think the iPhone numbers in September quarter held up pretty well uh, relative to three months ago. I think it's more like you've seen some numbers from for like December and in, into the March quarter. Um, I think inventory levels are going to be fine. I think supply constraints are beginning to ease. Um, I think the two headwinds are going to be number one, FX. You know, keep in mind 25% of sales is from Europe, where US dollar is very strong. Europe has their own energy crisis. So I think Europe is kind of going to be interesting. FX is going to be a big headwind. The, the question that investors seem to ask is like, does FX even matter uh, for the stock? It's a headline news, but you know, the stock is going to look past it. But I do think that looking into December, I think iPhone matters, services matter. Um, but you know, the real question to me is what happens to iPhone in calendar 23? Uh, unfortunately, Apple is not going to give you guidance beyond one quarter. Isn't FX just another way of talking about demand elasticity, though? I mean, um, the, the iPhone is going to be more expensive for a lot of consumers outside of the U.S., outside of North America, certainly, right as demand in some of those areas is questionable. So you could end up with a situation where, yeah, there's demand for Apple's higher-end phones, and so that's good, relatively speaking, for margins, but the top line just really doesn't come in where some people might hope? No, I think it's a completely valid uh, argument, and that's why we actually trimmed our iPhone numbers into the December quarter. Um, it's still, I would say, relatively healthy so far, but you're absolutely right. You know, when you have 25% of your sales from Europe, uh, U.S. dollar is strong, energy crisis, the consumer has less dollars or euros to spend. It's definitely something to worry about. Um, but all I'm saying is that, you know, I think the challenge to me is more into next year. But I do think that you've got, you're beginning to see moderation in iPhone sales. In fact, for next year, for calendar 23, we actually have iPhone units down on a year-over-year -year basis by about 6% compared to this year, because we do think you're going to see some moderation in iPhone demand. To your point, the consumer has less um, you know, uh, discretionary income to spend. Hey, Chris, just a question on positioning. You know, a big part of the discussion this morning is that there is a rotation away from mega cap tech, given Alphabet and Microsoft and now Meta, uh, into cyclicals and industrials uh, and some other names that are ex-tech. Um, does that make the bar higher for Apple, or do you think people rotate within tech to a name like Apple? You know, I think uh, it's an interesting question. The reason I would say that is because Apple has kind of been on a relative basis held up pretty well, uh, and a lot of people have been in the name, although I would say many long and leaves are, you know, look at it on a relative basis as to relative underweight or relative neutral to their portfolio versus actually being overweight, but the stock has held up well, number A, because they have a big buyback, uh, they have very strong cash flow generation. And so the expectations are actually, you know, pretty baked into the stock that they have to do well. Flip side is that I think compared to the other large large cap tech or mega tech, um, the growth expectations for Apple were never that high. You know, right from the beginning of the year, the, the growth was always going to be like, you know, mid single digits compared to some other names, where it's like, you know, double digits. So I think on that basis, the potential for disappointment is relatively low. But I do agree. I think given where the stock is done so far, which has been relatively okay, um, the expectations are that they better come out with a decent number uh, or else there could be some trouble for the stock. So relatively okay, resilient. It's outperformed tech more broadly this year. Um, so what would investors need to see to get it to your $200 price target, especially in a potential recession? And you just said that you think we'll see some moderation in iPhone demand next year. So what gets it there? Yeah, Deirdre, I think, I think you know, uh, the interesting thing is I think, you know, people think of recession as the economic definition of two quarters of negative GDP. I think investors are looking at it more from an unemployment-driven recession. So in other words, 3.5% unemployment starts going higher, tech companies start laying off employees. Those are the high income generating, you know, customers of Apple. So to me, it's more calendar 23 when if, if you start seeing more higher unemployment or white-collar unemployment, and iPhone numbers start coming down, I think that's when the stock is probably in trouble. Um, so far, the numbers are resilient, but I would definitely argue that we're not going to see that yet or into this print or into the December quarter. Maybe some moderation iPhone sales because the demand isn't strong, 
but really it's about calendar 23. And uh, so far it's holding up. But I think when we get into like January, February is when we got to revisit where the estimates are. Um, but I would probably say that you know, the stock has been resilient because it's a huge cash flow generating machine. People feel kind of comfortable holding into it, and it's it's held up uh, relatively well compared to most of their most of its mega cap uh, tech peers or even the broader market. All right, Chris Sankar from Cowan, thank you.